supposed to come out. We talked about it on the show. We've tried to get you on, but now you're here. You get to actually see him. It was going to start Nicolas Cage by Tim Burton. It never happened. Your documentary is going to talk why it never happened. Oh, yeah. We go fully into why it didn't happen, what was going to happen, what were they made, and how far they got. That's it. What, what else do I have to say about it? That's what it's about. And what actually, happened? We should tell them, as we recorded, it's out now, right? Yeah, you know what? We just put it out here July 9th at San Diego Comic-Con. We premiered it both digitally. We released it to all of our Kickstarter and fan backers like a couple hours right before we released it to the general public. And then we've got the Blu-rays and the DVDs for sale here at Comic-Con. The Blu-ray has 10 hours of extra footage. So if you like the movie and you just saw the movie, you can explore it and get further into the in deeper interviews and stuff. Yes. Yeah, so what, what, without going that all the way, what what do you get into? Why 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 didn't it happen? Well, without I mean, it's not like it's a the actual process of the of why it didn't happen is real simple. It's like Warner Brothers was a, it was at a time when they couldn't monetarily spend three hundred million dollars with the script not being done and some fear and trepidation of like what if Nicolas Cage and Tim Burton. There was a whole bunch of these things, but it was mainly because the movies that they had been putting out over the course of two years were not financially making the money back. And making films is a business, so they couldn't take that risk at that time, so they decided to go with Wild Wild West, which was a risk, and it didn't work out, didn't pay off. So yeah. that's, a, that's the nitty-gritty of why it didn't happen, but our film is less about that and more about what happened with the process of the creativity and making the film and the concept art and the people involved in it. So, Who or what told you guys, hey, we got to do a documentary on this? Well... Oh, that was all. That was all, John, because he'd been collecting the artwork for many years, um, and had you know s scoured the internet to find out what was available about Superman Lives, because it was a different idea for Superman, and uh, you know before that we'd had you know Christopher Reeve and nothing else. So, yeah. um, so it was his interest f that sparked the idea. But then it was a conversation we had with some friends after John met Steve Johnson, who's a special effects artist who did the rainbow suit, you know, mm. the famous, the or infamous, yeah. you know, Superman rainbow suit. Um, it was after that that John started talking to some of our friends and said, you know, this is a, th basically, th th it, he couldn't let the idea go and the fr his, our friends were saying, you know, you should really kickstart this because yeah. he's had some success I with Kickstarter. Done a, done a very successful Kickstarter the year before uh, for an animated short and raised like 175000 So I knew I could do another Kickstarter and I, I had like the fans and the people who liked the work that I'd done on Metalocalypse and all these other shows that I already directed. So I knew I had a fan base. It was like, what am I going to do next? And so then this idea happened, and it was just actually it's just something that I would, had been interested in. I didn't want to make a documentary. People were like, why don't you make a documentary while we were hanging out? And I was like, nah. But then the idea was like, man, I really should try to make that, because I bet it would be a lot of fun. It would be interesting. It would be something different that I haven't done yet. So why shouldn't I try it? And also, no one else is going to make it. And I really truly felt that way. And now you got a bunch of other people who want to make documentaries on Superman movies. But cut to two and a half years ago, people were laughing at me. Why do you want to make a documentary about this movie that didn't happen 10 years ago? Because it was something that was interesting and I knew there was something there. So it was really kind of like a, a test to myself to see if I could make this work. Yeah, so that's what I was going to ask you, but let me, let me change it a little bit. For people who are maybe hearing about this for the first time, why should they care about a movie that was a Superman movie that was never done? Well, for myself, I could speak for myself and other nerds who might care about something like this, is that it would have been uh, cosmically different than everything that we've seen since and before. Like, we, we would have gotten a Superman that not only would he have fought Brainiac, but the ideas behind it were like some of the, the things that were like some of the best selling comics of Superman, like Superman, the death of Superman, him fighting Doomsday, him coming back. It was like that was the basic storyline, but the way they wove it together, that with some of the casting decisions like Nicolas Cage as Superman, I think that's a very good casting because Nicolas Cage can play someone that they were going with. They were going with like a somebody that you could empathize with, someone who's not yeah. like the square chinned guy. Yeah. yeah. And they also were gonna go with like Kevin Spacey as Lex Luthor and Christopher Walken as Brainiac, and I thought that was inspired casting. Also, um, this is a you know a peek behind the curtain uh, as far as filmmaking in general. It's for cinephiles as well, so it's about how these blockbuster films get made or unmade. Because this process goes happens with every single film, you know, and especially with superhero films, you're going to see all this. You're not going to see all this concept art. You're not going to see all the ideas that were going into the the before you know the before process is what's explored in this film, and it happens with everything. But you don't get to to meet and talk to the concept artists or or meet and talk to the writers, um, find out what happens in development. That's that's one of the 
things about this doc that's key is it's not just about superheroes, it's about filmmaking. Yeah, now, would you say also not just the process, but also the, the business side of it also? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Did we see some of that in the documentary? So, so again, you know, it's out now. Where, where, where can they get it? You guys can go to www.tdoslwh.com. That's just the death of Superman Lives, What Happened, anagram for it. It's tdoslwh.com. You can get the digital download or the Blu-ray. Those both have 10 hours of extra special features that if you like the movie, you're going to want to hear what John Peters, what Derek Fry, what Sylvain, all these different people, what they, you know, it goes into way in depth. So it's really good. Deleted scenes, a featurette. We talk to the fans in the in the extras as well and get their reactions. So there's a lot there, and uh, you just got to map out your time. And maybe you can binge watch it if you want, but I would pace yourself. <laughs> now it's out. It's out now. Yeah, it's out yeah. now. It just premiered today. It's Bam. Fun. It, where else but San Diego would you do it? Um, yeah, there was a it was a great timing. We knew we had a booth. We're like, yo, let's just rock it and blow it up. So yeah. that there it happened. Have you given any thought to maybe what you want to do next? I have actually. I've been working on a, a, a horror musical. So, wrote, written a, a few Two songs. That, wouldn't think of, wait, wait. Yeah. Two great things that go great together, horror and musicals. It's happened before. Yeah, it's happened before. Look at Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, Look at Phantom of the Horror. Paradise. I'm going to pop off some craziness. So uh, yeah, and uh, I think we're going to take a, a, a rest period after this is over. So we'll be touring with this movie for the next few months at least. Yeah. And then, uh, and then we're... We'll be in Australia. We're actually screening it in Australia and then the Philippines after that. Um, and then we're going to come back here and take some much needed downtime uh, and then plan our ne next crazy idea. Oh, by the way, you can follow us on Twitter too. It's at TDOSLWH. There you go, right follow on. him in there. John, Holly, thanks a lot. Thanks. Good luck with everything. Thanks yeah. for, for the documentary right on. too. Cheers.